Whether you are just starting out homeschooling or if you are a veteran homeschooler, you can follow these steps to cast vision for your family and your homeschool this next year. Hi, I'm Mallory and I've been homeschooling for eight years. I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed as things are being released and so I thought maybe I should just make a video about the process um, that helps me make decisions to see if that could help you plan your school year as well. This is the time of year to start thinking about our next homeschool year already. Is it the best time of year? Probably not because we are so burned out from the previous year and awaiting our much deserved summer vacation and we're making decisions that are going to be affecting us for the next 12 months. Full disclosure, I am fresh out of the wild and free California conference that just happened and so although I am a bit weary from the school year, I feel refueled, refreshed, and I am ready to take on the vision for my family and our homeschool. If you don't know what Wild and Free is, go over to Instagram. They also have a website and it's full of inspiration. I've heard about the movement for a while. I just didn't really check it out. And while I was at the conference, I picked up the original Wild and Free book by Ainsley Armit, and she's the one that started the whole thing. So once I'm finished, I can do a little book review for you. I firmly believe that there is a correct order of decisions to make in order to have a successful school year. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so that you know which step to make in what order and you don't wanna miss the very last tip I have for you. So instead of picking your curriculum, signing up for activities, and then squeezing in family time, try this formula instead. First, you want to figure out your why for homeschooling. Why is it that you are homeschooling? And you cannot cheat and say, I'm homeschooling because my public school is a three out of 10 on the national scoring system, and that wasn't good enough for me, and I just don't have the funds for private school, so I thought I would try homeschooling. In fact, this is a great reason to begin homeschooling and on your homeschool journey. However, it will not sustain you on those really tough Days. I want you to really dig deep, paint a picture of how beautiful it can be for you to discover this amazing world with your child. Think of your child's face lighting up as they discover a new passion. And because you are catering their school around those passions, they have the time to really explore, get lost inside of those rabbit holes. You are catering your child's education, so although one side of that equation means so many choices and possibly overwhelm, the other side means that once you know what works for your child, what their interests are, what works for your schedule, it's pretty easy to make decisions from there. I kind of think of it this way. If I was shopping for clothing and I had no idea what I wanted to buy, I would just kind of wander around, I would feel overwhelmed and a little bit stressed out, and then even if I bought a few pieces, I would wonder, do I really need these or do I have something similar at home? And is this gonna help me with my current season's wardrobe? So when I go shopping, I have a list. Okay, I want some white jeans, I want a black tank top, I want a black zip-up hoodie. I like to list specifically what I'm looking for and then when I'm in the store, I can go straight to it. And I think the same principle can be applied towards our homeschooling journey. As soon as you paint the picture, you paint the vision, and then you fill in your schedule then whatever's left, you fill that in with what you decide. You're not letting curriculum guide you, you're not letting outside classes guide you, and you're certainly not letting extracurriculars guide your decisions. You are the boss of your homeschool, of your family, and your schedule. These are some of the whys that help me on those hard days, and if you find yourself not homeschooling confidently, I 
recommend the book Homeschool Bravely by Jamie Erickson. She has great tips on how to answer skeptics you may have and just embrace your identity as a homeschool mama. Once you have your why, hopefully written down in some place where you can look at it daily or weekly for encouragement. Think about the family culture you would like to establish. I'm currently listening to Ainsley Armit's second book, Wild and Free Family, on my Scribd app so I can play it audibly while I'm doing chores. If you don't know what Scribd is, I will put my link in the description and it really allows me to consume a lot more books because us mamas don't have a lot of time to just sit and read books. So anyway, in this book, she talks about establishing your family culture. And if you are not purposely establishing your family culture, one will be assigned to you by society, by a grueling job or other outside factors. If your family likes being busy and homeschooling families are just as guilty of this as private and public school families, maybe even more so. Most of the homeschool families I know are the busiest people I know. So if that works for you, then that's great. If those activities that you are shuffling off to are contributing to your family culture, they are building and making the bonds of the relationships in your family stronger, awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Just make sure that it's done with purpose and you have peace with the commitments that are filling your schedule. So if your extracurriculars are contributing to your family bonding and aligning with the passions of your children, then that's great. Also, keep in mind how much time you want to set aside for family-only time. With my family, we have Friday night movie nights, Saturday night game nights, we do one-on-one -on -one dates weekly with a parent and child and we rotate whoever that is. And then my husband and I try to do date nights once every couple of weeks. And in between all of that, we do try to get outside, get some nature in, get some exercise. And so we like to do hikes or go play soccer together, go play pickleball, things like that that is also a priority for our family. And these things come before anything else. These are number one, these go on my calendar first. And once you have your family commitments established, then you can sprinkle in outside curriculars. So once you've written down your priorities as a family, then you can funnel all the decisions through this perspective. The sky's the limit to the things that can fill your days and nights. Knowing what your family values and what interests your children instead of following what everyone else is doing is the key to having peace with laying out your next school year. I also recommend leaving a little extra breathing room for yourself as well because life happens, things come up, unexpected things. If your schedule is so jam-packed, one little thing can set you off and just explode the whole thing and you will feel so overwhelmed. So I encourage you to keep some breathing room in there. And if you are just bored and restless and you want to add things to your schedule, it's so much easier to add to your schedule than it is to take things off that you've already committed to. Okay, so we've got our why, why we're homeschooling. We have our family culture established. We have our family time established and also extracurriculars. Then you can choose your curriculum. So if you've picked some co-ops or some classes that will be touching on some core subjects, then that curriculum has already been selected for you and you can check those off of your list. Don't forget to mark off more than one subject that a curriculum may cover. If you want to choose new curriculum for the upcoming school year, I recommend that you only do one or two new things than what you've used in the past. If you are a brand new homeschooler, you won't have this luxury because everything will be new. But if you have been homeschooling for a while, I recommend one, maybe two new curriculums maximum, or you could introduce a new curriculum at a time. So you could start with one new curriculum and then the next month add on the next one and then another month goes by, you add on another new one. It's kind of like juggling, just doing one and then another one and then another one. Because if you just ditch everything that you use this year and then you get all new curriculum in the fall, it will feel 
really overwhelming, especially if you have more than one child. The exception to this would be if you are signing up for some classes that your children are doing online with their own teacher and it's pretty much self-guided because that's not as much on you as the parent. So I'm referring to curriculums that rely heavily on the parent as the instructor. I'm of the philosophy that I don't fix what's not broken in our homeschool. So if we have some curriculum that is working beautifully for my children, I do not change it. Is it sometimes tempting when everyone is raving about the shiny new curriculum that just came out? Absolutely, but I try to keep my eyes on the prize and just stick with what is working for us. And that doesn't mean that all my kids are using the same math curriculum. I'm talking about working for that specific child for that specific subject. And if you are homeschooling more than one child, and you're trying what worked for your first child and it's not working for subsequent children, it's okay. They are different, they may be a different learner, and I would love to do a video on the different homeschooling styles of teaching as well as the students' varying learning methods because a lot of people don't realize that, especially if they're just coming out of a larger public or private school situation. They are not used to having all the choices, tweaking things, and they may try to recreate public or private school just at home. But the beauty of homeschooling is you can cater it to each child and to your style as the teacher. And just sharing a little bit about what we will be doing this coming school year, we are going to get in nature more. We live in an absolutely beautiful part of the country. We are going to reinstate our tea times and during tea time, we brew some hot tea. And yes, even my boys drink hot tea. They like the Tazo Passion Tea. That's their favorite because it's kind of sweet and fruity. And I serve treats and we read things we normally wouldn't read, like poetry, Shakespeare, things like that. And then we can get into art, studying artists and classical music composers. And we're also leaving room for the kids to be kids and play and tinker with their KiwiCo boxes and their Legos. Ultimately, we're going back to basics. I think coming out of COVID, going from, okay, everything is shut to all of a sudden everything is open. We signed up for all of the things. And now I'm realizing that I don't want to just do the hustle and bustle and feel like we're constantly behind, we're always late, we're stressed out, we can't fulfill the obligations that we've signed up for and still kind of be still and enjoy nature and get our devotions in. Study some of those um, dessert subjects, I like to think of them, the art and the music and the nature study. And I found myself longing for those unhurried days of school where we could just take the time and study ants busy at work or go see the butterflies in the butterfly grove and having in-depth discussions with my kids as they come up with really interesting and hard questions. Basically, I missed the reasons why I was homeschooling in the first place. So we are reclaiming wonder in our children's education in the words of Ainsley Armit. If you're wondering how you can plan all this out and be so intentional, I will share my planner videos. I do use my phone, the iCalendar option, but I love seeing everything out a month at a glance and then I fill out my planner weekly. I use Erin Condren planners. I have the life planner as well as the teacher planner that I use as a homeschool planner. So you can look for that in another video. If you would like to select some preschool or kindergarten level curriculum, you can watch this video right here. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Mm -hmm.